Hi everyone, so today I'm excited to talk with pro boxer and YouTuber right here, Chris Mai from Benjistat.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi Mutita, it's uh, such a pleasure to be on your show. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, I'm like, hey, your name is quite familiar and they're like, I already subscribed your YouTube channel actually. Yeah, that is awesome, you know, because was it before or after um, we had reached out to you? Before. Oh, before. Oh, see, yeah. That's so actually, I already know you, familiar with you somehow. <laughs> yeah, if you're just from doing the affiliate marketing and whatnot. Yeah, so right now I'm like talking to one of my influencers that I'm following. So let's say, let's put it that way. Excited though. Yeah, that's why podcasting is so awesome. You can really interview almost anybody. I know, I know. That's why I love doing podcasting as well. Yeah. So why? I know if they are your follower, they might already know that why you start this career. But why? Can you tell us why you start this blog and YouTube? What makes you start doing this? Yeah, well, I've always been sort of a serial entrepreneur. I've always started businesses here or there. Even when I was uh, really young, I remember in uh, elementary school or maybe it was middle school, one of the two. I was around like eight years old, but uh, we would sell candy, you know, from door to door or whatever for, you know, a class fun ride, friend fundraiser or something. And uh, I remember I used to mark the candy up like one or two dollars just so I can get a couple of bucks for myself. I don't know how ethical that was at the time, but I don't know if they really thought that an eight-year-old could figure that out. <laughs> but that's kind of, uh, you know, so I've always been doing something, trying to make a few extra bucks. And um, so I've done everything from running uh, eBay businesses, selling and buying and selling computers and clothes. And I've even DJed on the side, you know, it's been kind of crazy uh, doing all types of things, but none of them really, really stuck. You know, I kind of just did a few things, made a few bucks from it. And then, you know, just let, let, let everything kind of fall where they may. Uh, but then um, we got married and we found out that we were going to be pregnant with our first son. So uh, my wife wanted to quit her job. And uh, at first I was like, no, you can't, you know, you got to work at least part time or something. And uh, but then after a while, it was pretty much like, you know what, you need to figure this out. And I was like, oh, no, OK, I had to grow up, you know, be a man kind of quickly right there. So um, I stumbled onto some online business type stuff and doing like a lot of surveys and just other things that really doesn't make you a ton of money and really does require a ton of time, you know? So I wish, I wish I could say that I found online business and then everything was just you know, peaches and rainbows from that point. But to be honest, uh, it, it took a little bit of experimenting, but then I did kind of stumble onto blogging and then blogging naturally kind of rolled into YouTube and uh, everything kind of just blew up from that point. So you start blogging first and then that's why you expand to YouTube channel. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, one of the I was, one of my primary sources of traffic for my blog was through search engine optimization or SEO. So uh, one of the SEO factors to get your website to rank is you know higher is to include a video on your post somewhere. And uh, so I would write a blog post and then I'd go on YouTube and find a video somewhere and then just plop it on my on my blog post. But that video you know has their own people. They have their own agendas. They want people to go click on their stuff and join their email list. So it was kind of like a, you know, it was kind of disjointed because they're landing on my blog, but then they're watching a video of somebody else. I didn't want that anymore. So I decided to go ahead and create my own YouTube channel. And uh, I would just create like a video to accompany the blog post. It wasn't anything like fancy or anything. I remember at first it was just basically just reading the blog post. But uh, what I started realizing was that a lot of these videos started getting traction and getting views and stuff a lot faster than the blog was. The blog was getting there in time, but it wasn't getting there as fast as YouTube was. So I kind of made a fundamental shift. I started making uh, YouTube videos with the accompanying blog rather than the other way around. And uh, that's when things really started to take off. Yeah. As a consumer, I binge watching YouTube a lot and... Oh yeah, I love it. Definitely. <laughs> I just click description and whatever the links there, I just like, I don't want to search anymore. I just like use that link. Oh man, I don't even watch regular TV anymore. You know, I just, everything's on YouTube. I can sit there, watch a video wherever I am, whenever I am, and I can uh, find something interesting to watch. Why you start affiliate marketing? Why is that not creating your own product or service online? Because affiliate marketing is really, really easy. All right. Now, in the span, in the grand scheme of things, it's very, very simple. It's a little harder once you start getting down to the nuts and bolts of how it actually works. But in terms of the other ways to monetize or make money with your blog, 
affiliate marketing is the easiest way because you don't have to own a product. Because if you own a product and somebody buys it from you, and let's say they don't like it, then they're going to have to return it. Then you got to, you know, do a customer service and you got to give them a refund. And then you might want to find out, well, why did you send it back? What's wrong with it? You gotta, but with affiliate marketing, you just partner with the company, you promote their product. If they don't like the product after it's sold, they go back to the company, not you as the affiliate marketer. So that's, that's the easiest part of it right there. Now, granted, with that being the case, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, go out there and just promote any product just because it's going to pay you a decent commission. Actually have some ethics with it. Make sure, you know, that maybe you use the product that you're trying to promote or that you really, really trust what's going on with that product. Because when you're building an audience online, you know, if it's with your blog, if it's with YouTube, if it's with podcasting, whatever it happens to be, your number one thing is going to be your trust. And if you're just promoting whatever you want just to get an affiliate commission, people are not going to trust you and they're not going to buy from you anyway. So because of that, that's why you recommend people to niche down at the very first, right? And yes, definitely. I think that is something that people have problem with. I can sell anything because I use many type of product line or like they touch based on many industry software product and so on. So how can they start looking for something that they want to be partner with and they are totally feeling happy to represent this product? Well, it does take some trial and error. You know, when you first start, you start reaching out to companies. Sometimes they're not going to accept you to partner with them as an affiliate marketer because you may not have an audience yet. Or maybe their product doesn't necessarily work with the kind of audience that you currently have. Uh, so that might be the case, but it doesn't necessarily mean that just stop right there. There's other products out there that you can also promote. People and companies, I should say, are always looking for ways to further promote their own brands. You know, and then if they can get in front of an audience that uh, an audience, especially that's, that's interested in what it is they want to buy. Like, for example, one thing I always say is you don't want to try to sell a whole bunch of medical equipment to lawyers. You know, they're not interested. Lawyers aren't interested in stethoscopes. You know, they're not interested in, in medical equipment. You would try to promote that to doctors. So you want to make sure that the company that, that's creating this medical equipment gets their stuff in front of doctors who are interested in buying medical equipment. And it's the same difference with our podcasts, with our blogs, with our YouTube channels, whatever it happens to be. As long as we have a nice narrow audience, it's easier for us to go to companies, tell them who our demographic is, how old are, are, is our average listener, what are their likes, what are their dislikes, you know, what kind of things do they like to spend money on. That way you can go to these companies, say, hey, I have an audience of 5,000 people, 1,000 people, 100 people. It doesn't even have to be that many people. And they are probably going to be interested in what it is you have to, to sell. So how much you want to pay me to put you in front of that audience? You know, it's just like a commercial on TV. People are paying to get in front of the audience that is most likely to buy their products. Yeah, such a very, like, you need to negotiate with them for real. Like, what you have and what they, they will get, right? And I personally, because I travel a lot, before lockdown and I try to get like affiliate from those the the discount card for the launch or something they're not yeah. getting me like they yeah. said my, my website hasn't have that much attraction yet I'm like okay <laughs> well the thing is once you get the traffic down and you have people who are consistently coming to your website or consistently downloading your podcast consistently watching YouTube videos and most importantly one thing that I always recommend is making sure that you're building an email list and if you have an email list with tons of people on it, then you can actually start having people reach out to you to market to your list because they want to get more sales. If they can pay me, you know, a flat, a flat fee, they're probably going to make more money on the other side if they actually get some people to turn to buyers from your list or from your audience. Once we have the niche clear, once we know that, okay, at least from the time, like at the moment, this is what we want to promote. You mentioned earlier that you actually have a few website depends on the audience that you're promoting yes. to. And I think that's a very smart way to think that way. But you have to build the traffic of the website. I mean, also one. yeah, it does take time. <laughs> no, you do have to build the traffic on each one of them. Um, and it's not easy. <laughs> okay, it does take time. Um, sometimes I'll have a website that I'm working on, and that'll probably be my project for like six, eight months, a year, you know, you got to sit down with it that long. I have my main products 
for example, uh, my main brand is Benji's Dad brand. It's probably my biggest brand that I have. But then I have other brands that are not as small or not as big, but they talk about more specific things. Uh, for example, I have a website that talks about watches, you know. Uh, so just because I happen to like watches at the time, it's funny. A lot of times the, the blogs that I start, the YouTube channels that I start, isn't always, you know, for the money or the earning potential. It's because that's what I'm interested in right then and there. You know, that's the topic. And by doing it that way, it makes it very fun really to do the research because I probably would have been doing that research anyway. Now I can just turn that around and, and create content, create a blog, create a YouTube channel for it. And by doing that, now I can get paid on the other end just for obsessing over my, you know, one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, hundred percent. I I agree. Like when you're interested in something, you can totally research on rapid holes right there. Like, yeah. And yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. You're trying to get people who, you know, who you can, I like to say geek out with, you know, just be a straight nerd about your, your, whatever it is that you're talking about. I'm recently going to be starting a golf blog because I just recently took up golf like within <laughs> the last year or so. And I'm just, I'm doing all things research when it comes to golf. I'm always just like, okay, I need to fix this. I need to straighten that up. I need to do, you know, it's a lot of stuff, but since I'm doing that research as a new golfer, as a new golfer, I'm having the same questions that other new golfers are having, you know? So now I can create content helping those people and then pitch them a new uh, driver or, you know, a new yeah. golf training or something like that, that companies that I partner with. And because I'm creating content that a golfer, especially a new golfer would be interested in, chances are he'd be interested in buying something else. And then I can get a commission from it. I, I just have the light bulb right here that actually you just get paid from what you're interested. And yeah, those nice. equipment that you invest in what you're interested right now, you get the money back to pay for those things that you, that you have already invested. I mean, that's amazing. But another thing is that as the scam time that you have experienced before earlier as well, me either, this is crazy. People want fast money, right? And yeah, yeah. confirm me that blocking not give you fast money. <laughs> No, blogging does not give you fast money. That's one thing I can definitely, uh, I mean, I just try to impress upon people as much as I possibly can because it's going to take time. Like it might take you four to six months before you even start seeing consistent traffic onto your blog. You know, um, when I first started, uh, I think I got my first sale about two months in. It was probably around six months before I was making a few hundred bucks with it. Probably around a year when I made my first thousand dollars in a single month with it. You know, but I think part of that is just Google, because that's where you're trying to get a lot of your traffic from. If you're going to go for SEO, Google kind of puts people through like a proving period where they want to know, are you going to be here for the long haul? You know, is the information that you're providing actually helpful? Is it right? And in order for Google, which is just a computer, Google's just a computer trying to figure this kind of thing out. So you have to give it time. You know, I think the average time for a new blog post to rank might be anywhere from four to six months just for it to rank. Now, granted, I've written blog posts before and I've seen it rank within a few seconds, you know, sometimes depending on the keyword or the, the word that you're kind of targeting, you know, to, to rank for. You know, if it's low competition, meaning not a lot of people are talking about it on the Internet, you're probably going to rank just like that with it. You know, but then there's other ones. It might take you a few months before you kind of creep onto the first page. And then you have to prove to Google that you have the right information, the information that, that, that's satisfying people. Uh, because when, Google, when someone Googles a question, you know, they want to get the right answer. If they get the wrong answer, they probably won't use Google again. They're going to use something else because something else gave them the right answer. So it's to Google's advantage to use your information as long as it's correct and, and present it to people who have that question. Once you understand how Google works, it's actually very kind of fun and challenging, you know, to kind of create content that can rank number one. And how long until like someone already click and then purchase, follow your affiliate links, how long you get paid? Like how long do you have to wait to get it back into your bank? Uh, well, that depends on the company that you partner with. There's some companies that I get paid within 30 days of, of, of a link being clicked and someone actually going through with the purchase. There's others, it might be around 60 to 70 days before I actually get the, the, the paid portion of it. And the reason for that is it's just the, the kind of product that it is. 
for example, I have a, a website that talks about web hosting. And, you know, once you sign up for web hosting, if, uh, and when I say web hosting, I mean a place to store your website, basically. So you sign up for web hosting, they might offer a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you sign up somebody and they go through and on day 59, they're like, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. They, they can get their money back from the web host. So the web host doesn't want to find themselves in a situation where someone signed up, they paid me, and then they got to somehow claw it back because they came back on, you know, came back on day 59 because they didn't want it anymore. So it just, it just depends on the affiliate program that you sign up for. 99% of companies on the internet, especially have affiliate programs and they have agreements that you can read up on before you even join. And a lot of times they even have specific people within the company who are what are called affiliate managers. And you can email them and ask them any question that you happen to have. And they'll give you, you know, the answers to whatever questions that you have to make sure that what you're signing up for is actually what it is you're going to be getting back because you don't want to send a ton of traffic to these businesses. You're, you're getting a ton of sales from it. And then all of a sudden you don't get paid for it. You know, you don't want that to happen. So by setting everything up, making relationships with these businesses, these affiliate managers and these affiliate programs, you can really earn a decent income from it just from putting in a little bit of work up front. Mm -hmm. And because of that, like I can see the delay. So people who want to depend on this stream of income as a blogger or like YouTuber, they might have to plan the financial part quite precisely, right? Because yeah, yeah. One thing that I realized, you know, definitely before I quit my job to do this full time was, you know, when you work a full time job, you're probably getting paid every two weeks, you know, or on the first or 15th or however that happens to work out. But when you are, you know, getting, you're earning money from your business, you know, that's up and down. You know, you might have one month where everything's just great, you know, where you might, you might clear a few thousand dollars, but then you might have another month where you only clear, you barely clear a thousand dollars. But because of the money that you made from other months, it kind of, uh, uh, it makes up for it, you know. So it does require you to to budget a little bit better. It does require you to uh, make sure that your bills are in order and you're not spending more than you're getting back. But when you're running a business, that's the ebbs and flows. That's just normal. But it's so much better, in my opinion. We, I've definitely enjoyed it because that gives you a ton of freedom. Now, yeah, to know. play golf, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, you know, I haven't like just today, for example, I haven't done much work for my business like all day. And it's like a random Tuesday. You know, and so I've been able to do that because I was able to work on other things, working on some other house stuff, you know, that I can do what I want. And uh, you, you plan it, you schedule it, you make sure that whatever it is that needs to be done gets taken care of so that you can continue to get paid, obviously. So at the back of affiliate account, you'll be able to track the clicks on each product that you already like used your affiliate link, right? Mm -hmm. How you manage to track this thing, especially like lots of traffic like you are having currently because you have to evaluate those quality of the blog somehow i'm not sure i just asking and also mm -hmm. to make it match between the clicks and the tracking that you have been oh, okay yeah and also the the money that you get paid you know because if not yeah. you cannot check back at all that's true you, you do need to look at it uh consistently because if you don't you know you might be losing out on some money you know, and um, more times than not, the business isn't going to uh, pay you on accident. You know, it's going to, it's got to be stuff that you actually generated. Um, one thing that I do is I have a spreadsheet that I kind of keep track based on the business. So I have one blog, I'm signed up with this affiliate, this affiliate, and this affiliate. And then, you know, once every few weeks, once a month or whatever, um, when the money's coming in and I end up doing the books at the end of the month, I look to see how much money came from there. And I might have an idea, is that higher or lower than what it usually is? And if it's lower, you know, I can log into the back office for those particular programs. Like affiliate programs have their own websites, basically, that's completely aside from the main business itself. So for example, Amazon is one that a lot of people use. So Amazon has a whole section of their website that's just for affiliates. So you go back there, you can see who's clicking on your items, you can see what they're buying when they click on the items, and then when you're going to get a commission from it. And if it's higher or lower than normal, and you can go back to your website and say, okay, so 
I was making a hundred bucks a month from it before. Now I'm only making 50. So what changed? You know, you might realize that the price of the product that you were promoting has changed. You might realize that the traffic on your website to that particular page may have gotten cut in half for some reason. You know, there's a lot of reasons why, but you just kind of look at the stats and you make what I like to call, you know, data driven decisions. Look at where something is failing and figure out, okay, where's my bottleneck? What's causing the issue here? You go tweak it and then test it with some more traffic just to see if you can make it better. So you do have to do a lot of uh, keeping track of different affiliate programs. But once you kind of get it down to a science, you know, and just being somewhat organized with it, it makes it, you know, relatively simple to keep up with. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, set up and then schedule what you have to do. Yeah, seems like that would be a routine of like, okay, how are you going to do it? It leads to the next question that I'm quite curious, how often and how consistent you have to post or like doing YouTube about the particular product? It depends. It's it depends. <laughs> what it is, because there's exceptions to all rules. You know, I know some people who promote or who will create, I should say, a YouTube video once every three or four months. And that video gets a million views. I'm like, how are you doing that? You know, and then I'll post a video two to three times a week, maybe once a week, depending on how busy I am. And, you know, it might get a few thousand views, you know, and you're just like, well, you know, where's the middle ground here? The one thing that I definitely recommend, especially when people are first starting off, is you just need to come up with some type of schedule so that you can be consistent with any platform, especially with YouTube, especially with podcasting or blogging. All you need to do is show up. If you show up consistently, if you you know, come to work every week with a new piece of content for people to consume, eventually you're going to find people who uh, enjoy your voice, enjoy your personality, enjoy what it is you talk about, and you're going to slowly gain an audience. And as you get this audience, they're going to be clamoring for you. They're going to want more content from you all the time. If I miss a week to post a YouTube video, I get posts on my old videos. Hey, Chris, where are you? You know, we're, we're, we're missing you, yada, yada, yada. And sometimes that makes it a little difficult because now you're kind of you went from doing this because you enjoy it, but now doing it because you have to do it because you have to appease your audience. But that's, again, why I definitely recommend you do something that you enjoy, something that you like, and it won't seem like work while you're doing it. Right. Wow. You have like someone reminding you to post a new video. That's very really impressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After a year's time, maybe to get a nice library of videos or a nice library of content. If you post inconsistently once or twice a month or something like that, all of a sudden at the end of the month, you only got 12 videos, 20, maybe 24 videos max. Um, I recommend two times a week. That way you have over 100 videos in a year's time. You know, with 52 weeks, that's 104 videos that you can create, which gives you 104 opportunities to market to someone. 104 opportunities for one of those videos to go viral or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Thinking back when you just started, like you have zero audience until you get your first six figures. I mean, that's amazing, right? But how much effort you put in to make this work? Oh, you put in quite a, a bit of effort, especially in the very beginning. It's, I always liken it to, you know, pushing a car from a dead heat. You know, unfortunately, I have run out of gas a couple of times, you know, while driving. And then all of a sudden, now the car stopped, you put it in neutral, and you just got to push. And you're pushing really, really hard, you know, just to get it just to move an inch. But then after it moves a few inches, all of a sudden, it starts rolling. And all of a sudden, you might have a hard time stopping the car. You know, it's the same difference when you're creating content online. At first, it's difficult. You're creating content, and it's crickets. No one's there to read or to watch, or to listen to what it is that you're creating. You're preaching to a ghost town. But you're, what you're really doing is creating a foundation for people to find you. And as people find you, then they go back to your old stuff, and they say, oh, wow, they've been producing great quality content for a long time now. You know, a lot of times when you see, like for YouTube, for example, if you see a YouTube channel, and you'll say, oh, he's an overnight success because – you've gained 100,000 subscribers in like two or three months. But what a lot of people don't see is that he's been creating videos for about a year and was stuck at 1,000 subscribers for a long time. He just finally got a couple of videos to pop. And then once they popped and they started going viral, people started looking at his older stuff and realizing he's been creating great content for years. You just didn't know that he existed. 
you know. So you have to to push through and continue pushing that car from a dead heat. And when you do that, it's going to get to the point where you're going to have a hard time controlling it sometimes. And at that point, it becomes passive. You know, once the car is going down the hill by itself, there's not much I can do about it, you know. So it's the same process. You you do have to work a lot in the beginning to build that foundation. But once it's built and the, it's, it's moving, then, you know, all of a sudden that's where, you know, taking a month long vacation, you know, can jump in where, you know, you don't have to create every day if you don't feel like it, because now that's working passively. You can now go work on other income streams to kind of build up for you and really start stacking them. Yeah. I mean, this is a real passive because like it's with search engine and they just found it. Right. That's a good type of problem, actually, if you cannot break your car or something. (laughs) Yeah. In this context. Yeah. I'm not proud to admit it, but it it is one of those things that has happened to me in the past. But it gave me that great analogy to use to help people understand you just got to create. Amazing. I mean, I see your picture and thank you for explaining things in very easy way. So right now you are enjoy blogging and right now you will become a golfer. So how can people <laughs> yeah. follow you then? Well, yeah, well, people can check me out at uh, my YouTube channel, Benji's Dad. If you just search it, Benji's Dad, my son's name is Benji. And so that's kind of where the name came from, Benji's Dad. Because, and it's really been pretty cool because I end up identifying with a lot of other fathers and parents, you know, who are out there just trying to earn an extra income just to kind of help ends meet, you know, and uh, that's just one of the probably the main ways that you can probably get in contact with me. Um, I do teach a lot of this as well uh, with my course, blogbuilderpro.net. So you can go check me out there. There's a free training that you can go check out immediately. And, uh, you know, just, just giving you some nice foundational stuff for your blog. And then if you feel like it, you know, sign up for the full course and you're going to be able to be uh, work with me directly. So that's blogbuilderpro.net. Thank you so much for joining me today, Chris. I appreciate it, Tita. I've had a really wonderful time talking marketing with you. Thank you. Hey, thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoy the show, you can subscribe here or here. And this is the previous episode. Check it out. See you next time.